Ladies and gentlemen, sports fans around the world, if you don't live with your finger on the pulse, such as I do, then you might not be familiar with our next guest, but let me introduce you. We have a fucking knockout, okay? Everybody asks for the best. Everybody wants the best. Everybody expects the best. So today, on Conversations with Pauli Primo, I'm bringing the best of the best. A champion. A champion of a sport on the rise. Someone who will literally smack the fucking taste out of your mouth. If you don't know who I'm talking about by now, talking about the middleweight power slap champion of the fucking world. Without further ado, John the Machine Davis. You know it's about that time to grab a bag of the stickiest itchy bond you can find and pearl one up. Oh, there he is. There we go. Hey, how are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well today, man. Thanks for asking, man. I uh I appreciate the time today. I uh <laughs> I I have I have a couple questions, you know, off the wall. A couple questions, a uh, couple things, obviously relating to being the champ. Um, but a a lot of this stuff is is just, you know, hey man, you know what the common person thinks. And uh, one thing that I found that we both have in common is we both come from a small town. So I wanted to touch on that. I uh, I'm in Delaware. I'm the first state over here. So. Uh, marshland <laughs> not really the woods but uh the town i came from had like a population of like a thousand so <laughs> you know what no, i mean? say salem salem is small like this is the city for me okay where I, where I grew up when i was a little kid was uh, i mean cornfields as far as you could see i had two neighbors um yeah the list the list goes on on and on for how country bumpkin that lifestyle was <laughs> it's crazy man are you uh are you an only child? No, I, I have an older sister, and then I've had quite a few step siblings over over time. Uh, you have four children, right? Yeah. Congratulations! I know it was a couple months ago, but uh, you just had your fourth a couple months ago, man. Congratulations yeah, thank you, on thank that! You. Absolutely, absolutely. I uh, oh, and also I wanted to say, you know what? I should have I I should have said it when we first came in. Uh, my family, I I can't say not me at all, so so I I can't speak from that point of view. But my whole family, pretty much, man, was all military. So I want to say thank you for your service at that as well. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that. Oh, no problem, man. Th thank you, man. It's uh, you know, we, we nobody could do what they do unless it was for people volunteering and signing up to do what you do. So appreciate that. Growing up, you know, obviously, like you just said, you know, having two neighbors on either side, uh, not much to do. I know myself, I didn't start smoking weed till I was about 16. I still smoke today. But uh, I remember, you know, they used to, my friends used to steal like a bottle of like the Christian Brothers fucking brandy. And, you know, we'd all run <laughs> off and have, have a couple of shots and, you know, whatever, real, real young. What, uh... <laughs> similar experience for you like it's just nothing to do i mean oh yeah even you know wh where i grew up in my childhood at least you know on a farm in homeworth ohio like i said i only had two neighbors one was a, an elderly lady who took care of her son and the other one uh, was the nice guy and his wife who you know luckily put up with me whenever i wandered over to their side of the valley but uh you know again nothing to do out there man like my summers you know but before i was like you know, 10, 11 ish before that, everything was running through the woods. You know, I had to, I had to wait for a bell. My dad would ring a bell. And then once I heard that bell ring, cause I was off in the woods or the cornfield or down in the Creek, wherever, wherever I was at, I had like five minutes to get home. So usually I had to start running. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's a little similar. As soon as the streetlight came on, they knew it was one block where we lived. So my mom was like, Hey, 
you know, you're six minutes, it took you three. Who were you talking to? <laughs> you know yeah, right. I mean? What were you doing? Yeah. It's uh and it's almost, you know. Only thing I could think of when you say that is like shh, the pan away shot from Forrest Gump, you know, everybody running through the forest, you know what I mean? It's like you have like the one the one uh house right in the middle of the field and just nothing, you know. For ours, it was almost like that, except for it, it came right up to the Delaware River, so it was nothing but like, you know, shit water and you know cattails <laughs> you know what i mean right i say we had a few cattails and the creek down at the bottom of the hill oh i'm sure there was probably shit water anyhow so <laughs> i was down there playing in it getting leeches on me and everything else that i could get into you know it you know it oh man i tell you we uh <laughs> one time i was probably around like 10 or 11 i i've always worn glasses i had a you know we we were not the uh most wealthiest people <laughs> so my mom we had to get brand new glasses i go in i'm looking down this guy pulls up on the river with a boat and i'm like oh that's a cool looking boat I look over bloop brand new glasses right into the river i jumped in i'm trying to find them couldn't find them oh that was a that was a long mile and a half ride home on the bike to tell mom dude i'll tell you what that sucked oh. man <laughs> yeah i could i can only imagine now the the dread on the ride home like man i might just pull off and go live in the woods <laughs> yep yep <laughs> make, them, make them think i got abducted or something then I, they, they won't worry about the glasses no more you know <laughs> yeah right they took the glasses in the process <laughs> you uh, uh you know with the farm farm life do you have any any crazy stories you ever been kicked by an animal like uh a horse? i've been i haven't been kicked i've been ran over by a cow oh, uh, i was helping my buddy dehorn a cow and it popped its head free and hit me in the arm with its hot horn so it kind of burnt my arm so that was a little bit a little bit fun but i grew up on an ostrich farm when i was a kid really? so you know other than helping my buddies do their kind of stuff we had cows and horses uh, after the ostriches, but there was probably a good three and a half, almost four year period, give or take that we had, we had big old birds on the farm and it was the same as you do with chickens. We'd hatch them in the house, put the small ones in one area. And once they were, you know, grown up teenage enough, they could go in the big pen and be able to be with all the big ones. We did it, uh, the meat, the meat and the eggs, you know, to get the eggs, you want to talk about a crazy story. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I would, I'm sure I'd take a, a kick or getting ran over by a cow or a horse compared to, I would have to run down the fence line with my hands in the air. So that all the ostriches would chase me and follow me. Okay. And my dad would pull the gate open. My sister would sprint in, grab one egg and sprint back out. Oh, because shit. every time the birds, they're not intelligent enough to understand what's going on because their brain's right. the size of a pea. So I, they would literally chase me every time. So I've been doing sprints, probably hundred yards, you know, depending on how many eggs and nests were in there, it could be 10 in a row where I get these birds chasing me and my sister's running in there to get the egg only because she was five years older than me. So she had longer legs and could move faster then. <laughs> oh, that's gotta be scary, dude. That's, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I couldn't imagine it. It's you know, it's like uh, do they peck? Because I imagine they they probably hit with their head, right? They probably just smash them, or they yeah, like they, when would, they attack. They just um, you know, people who were bald, they love to to peck your head, or if your hand was up and you had, they're like seagulls. They're attracted to shiny stuff. Oh. So your bald head, you know, if you had a watch and your hand was up, they'd peck at your fingers and stuff. But you know. It was it was like a velociraptor is what I've been trying to tell people these days. Like imagine, you know, that was the the early 2000s, you know, maybe the late 90s when we first got the birds. So like Jurassic Park's fresh. I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> I'm looking out there. I'm like, that thing's got big old claws and oh, it's just yeah. flopping around being crazy, trying to kill me. You know, my dad, my dad had several run ins with him where he barely made it out of the the fence with uh without getting you know injured kicked a shovel out of his hand because they have no fear you know they don't they don't okay. care their their processing in their heads is nothing like what uh what you could compare to most animals i'd say right i i always hear that uh on a farm i always hear like a pig is one of the smartest but you never you never you know you would never know it unless you mm -hmm. that, that that pretty much true or yeah, even though they seem sloppy and messy, I know this from doing research because I was before we lost the farm, I was about to get pigs was my next project. But they they actually pick like one designated area to go to the bathroom in for the most part. 
Oh wow. They, you okay. know, they're they're a lot more cleanly than you know they may seem just because they're slopping around in the muck. It's they have no way to cool themselves down. So that's that's why they're always slopping around in the muck more so than being just dirty ass pigs. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I can see that. It's kind of like a dog. They say, you know, when your dog's rolling around in shit, it's because it's just happy. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it, it, it may seem weird to us, but there's always always a rhyme and a reason within the animal kingdom. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> absolutely and i'm sure they sit there and tell each other the same thing about us <laughs> yeah yeah you uh there's one thing i don't know are, are you i mean i would assume it's a no but are you vegan no or, no okay so you're fucking because I, I would imagine obviously with you know weight training and everything like that i, I would imagine it would keep your strength protein but had to ask yeah, everything, you know, I just ate steak yesterday. <laughs> Meat-wise, I'm all about it. The bloodier, the better. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, you're a rare kind of guy, eh? Oh, yeah. What are you throwing on it? You just uh, you, you do a little dry rub, a little salt, a little pepper? What are you doing? Um, It either sits in the marinade overnight. What's that? The steak and chop, I think, my wife gets and puts it in the bag and it sits overnight. Yeah. Or, I mean, I don't care. I mean, it could be fresh off an animal out in the woods. It could be, you know, something something that my brother-in-law or one of my buddies got because we got a bunch of beef in here too that uh, i bought off a buddy for a cow that he raised so okay. you know just just regular old meat without anything on it doesn't matter to me i'll i'll uh, eat it i'll eat anything protein and wise pretty much same way carnivore man just i love it i love a good steak my whenever my wife and i we go out we get, you know, we get steaks, we bring them home, we go to cook them. And she goes, uh, which one do you want? You want the big one or what? And I go, I just want the one that's cooked good. You can have the big one. I just want a good piece of meat. Cause she, you know, we have the different tastes. She likes a little bit more marbling. I just like a hunk of meat. I'm not too big on a gristle. I'm a bigger guy. So it's ironic, but I'm not too big on a fat and gristle, even though a lot of people say that's the best part. Me, I'm just, you know, give me a nice medium little uh what do they call it compound butter on top a little garlic spread something uh, I'm oh heaven, yeah dude i'm in heaven <laughs> that t road house delight <laughs> yes yes exactly oh my god you uh how long you been married for uh we've been together for nine years now going on nine years okay didn't know the marital status i was going to say you know given your profession here that's going to come in handy in the bedroom a good forearm strength. You know what I mean? When you're getting down, you know, when you're getting down with your lady and you're just getting in there, you know what I mean? It's got, it's, it's got, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's gotta be a good, uh, it's gotta come in handy. The good, the, the upper arm strength, you know what I mean? So it, it can be, that's for sure. Let's just say I've, I've got four trophies to prove it. <laughs> oh man. I was hoping you didn't take offense to that. I was like, no, oh, no, man, I gotta, gotta ask, but you know what I mean? Hey, I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure if, if if my wife was a champ, she'd say, or if I was a champ, my wife would say, "Hey, give me hell." <laughs> <laughs> you ever go to like an arcade or like the boardwalk and test, even though it's not a punch, the slap against that to see how hard. Yeah. Like you, you, what do you get up there out of that nine nine nine? What are you hitting on a on an average? Um. Oh. It uh, it depends on the machine because they all rate different, so the numbers roll up different. Gotcha. Um, I know at International Fight Week last June, left-handed, I hit seven seven seven, so that was not that was nothing impressive. But then there was another machine down at a place called Crash and Burn in Vegas, right down the road from the hotel we stay at, Circa. Shout out to both of those places, but they had one in there that um. Everyone was hitting like 16 something and I was able to, or, no, there was a couple of guys in there who were trying to get high numbers. The one guy, the heavyweight from our group had set, had set the record at like 1900 something on it. And I was able to hit like 1800 on it, but my boots kept sliding across the floor. So yeah. it was one of them, them ordeals. Again, those things are fun. It just depends on how they're calibrated because they're all a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can see them there being a fluctuation within each one. That's, a, that's always something I wondered, you know, if you guys, you know, uh, big dick contest, go, everybody go out, you know, whatever, whatever, who can do this, who can do that. I, uh, you ever, you ever bet on it with your friends, things like that? You ever, cause I've heard you talk about, you know, uh, grow, you know, growing up in a small town, you know, fighting your friends. You ever, you got, did it ever start off as like regular slap box? And I know a lot of 
a lot of me and my friends, everybody come up, somebody say something just out of the blue, smack, and oh, okay. And then you're, you know, before you know it, you slap boxing the shit out of each other, you know? You ever, uh, were you like the reigning champ out of your friends? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Usually, for, we never really went to the face. We, we tried to save the face, but we would play body where you get in, you're doing just body shots or where you're just kicking each other in the legs or, uh, rock football catch where you throw a football up and then right after that you throw a bunch of rocks so that way you can try and you know it's something stuff that just doesn't make any sense but for the right. most part there was never any intentional intentional face hitting because we all knew that there was a good chance we might accidentally knock one another out right so it was it was as dumb as we were for all of the mischief we were getting into and and being rowdy the way we were uh it was there was a little bit of thinking process in there <laughs> that just tells me all my friends are assholes, man. <laughs> oh man, that's cool, man. At least you guys, at least you guys had the, you know, the good thoughts and not smack each other's face. My friends, you're just hanging out. It's smack, right? What the fuck? <laughs> you don't even know. You're just like, what the hell? <laughs> and then be before you know it, you know, you guys are doing the fucking squared circle. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> Who's ready to dance? All right. You uh, you know, being the champ, do you believe that America has uh, well, I guess this continent has the best slap competitors, or do you believe maybe like over um, in Russia they probably have? Because I know they're fucking nuts over there. They are. Fucking... I think the difference is, yeah, that that guy actually was in the last season of Road to the Title, but he ended up going home because he wanted to. So that's. Ironic that everyone brings him up because his face was so swollen. This, but, yeah, they, the little yeah. body. <laughs> Soren Kamsa is what his name was, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I think for our rule set, because the rule set we follow right. and how they do things in all of these other organizations, again, I think there's a big difference. So they might have powerful and crazy knockouts, but they're also over there you know, fighting each other on concrete slabs. Right. And and knocking each other out, you know, all sorts of crazy ways. Not that that doesn't happen over here for videos, but it's again the the rule set that we have differs from theirs a lot. So I would say we have the better ones for our rule set, right? But without them overseas, man, you know, we probably don't even have have this ever you know being a thing because it's it's their videos and their you know, build up of, of the views that they got online that Dana saw and he saw potential in. Right. Oh, there's definitely potential. I personally, I think it's great. I think it's, I, I, I see it at least. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm an outsider. I'm a guy on a fucking couch looking at you guys. So, you know, I think I see it for what it is. It's just, uh, not a big dick contest. Some people would probably look at it like that. Some people would be like, Oh, it's fucking whatever. It's stupid. It's this, it's that. It's just motto. We motto, man. Unless it's a championship round, it's just you give me your best three, I give you my best three. Who's 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 the last man standing? Who's you know what I mean? Who's who's got the fucking, you know, who can hold themselves? Pretty much, absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think that's why we find it so fun and so entertaining, and we are so competitive about it because, you know, it, it's not like other stuff where, you know, our definition of defense is not what people understand as a definition of defense. So, you know, in the, the aspect of the training we do, you know, a lot of folks are like, Oh, you know, you don't have to train. There's a lot, there's a lot of training. There's a lot. I mean, people have different styles, different techniques, different um, workout regimens that they prefer that works for them. You know, there's a, a lot more to it. You know, people think we're, you know, chewing crayons and hanging out, but a lot of us are, you know, playing chess and maybe 3d chess. If you're, if you're intelligent enough to figure that out. Oh, yeah. And given that everything's pretty much, you know, under the same housing now. If if tomorrow they were saying. Uh, relinquish the title and take a run in UFC or vice versa, relinquish the title and take a run in WWE. Would you do it? Oh, man. My skill set for fighting, I don't think I, – I mean, I would get beat up in the UFC right now. 
you know, I would, I would need probably a couple more years of solid training for that to even be like, yeah, I could go take a paycheck to get beat up, but that's not necessarily what I would want to do. Um, you know, in the, in the future, sure. You know, but by that point I have, you know, I'm 31 now I have until I'm 40 is what I'm giving myself to be able to add a competitive edge for, for these drug tested sports, you know, um, right. Cause eventually the body will start to give before the mind will. And I don't want to push it too hard for too long, but Hey, I might be 40 and still be act, you know, think that I'm 20 and my body's acting like it's 30. So I'll, right. I'll take that if I get there. But oh, yeah. as for the wrestling world, you know, that would be, that would be a fun option that I could, you know, definitely hop right into an easy gimmick to run with because of the slap, you know, being the champion definitely oh, yeah. would help out. And then, you know, having some athletic ability and, uh, the willingness to learn how they run things. Cause you know, that's a whole different type of show that you're out there. That's yeah. That's, that's could gonna... be five minutes could be an hour and a half, you know, right. so that's, but I would, I, I would entertain both, but definitely different pathways of taking, <laughs> taking those uh, offers on. Hell yeah. Definitely. You know, it's definitely an interesting thing to think about because anything's possible, man. I mean, given the state of both of those organizations are going right now, it, it, it's crazy, you know, especially with they're, they're doing. Uh, I know, and I don't know if you watch WWE, I'm not the most familiar, but you know, I brush up every now and then. Um, you know, they have the forbidden door people coming through, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. from different organizations, and especially given it's all pretty much under the same roof in one way or another. Uh, you know, it would just be a great tie in, just want to, you know, something to something I think about anyway, you know. There's a saying that I learned a long time ago. Uh, you never make fun of a man in work boots. You know what I mean? You you never you never poke the bear in work boots. And uh, you know, the boot life, you know, you 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 really I think you embody that. You know what I mean? When you when you put on your boots and you go out there to work, you put your fucking work in, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. In in every aspect, you know, even um it was funny that uh I thought of people don't know. When you watch back my last fight, they were, you know, oh, they were calling them dancing boots or something. That's they're like, well, they think we think it's slick, da da da. Like, no, they weren't slick. There's grip on the bottom. They were ostrich skin boots. Oh, so shit. that's why, that's why it's funny See? and ironic to me. Uh, obviously, I I live the boot lifestyle anyhow, from being, you know, a welder for many years, machine operator, a core maker, you know, everything that I do now at my daily job, I'm I'm almost always in boots. Even, oh, yeah. you know, doing, I'm wearing boots right now from doing the, the work in the house. So it's, it's, you know, if I'm not in my Crocs and I'm in tennis shoes, I'm probably <laughs> running Crocs on in the house, boots just about everywhere else. <laughs> there you go. I'm a, my wife converted me. I'm, I'm, I, I have switched over to the Crocs in the house and things like that. I, I bought the Count Chocula pair <laughs> and I bought her the Frankenberry pair. So she's big on crocs man they're they're fucking comfortable a lot of people oh hate yeah them, the whole comfortable the whole yeah i i dogged on them for years until finally they came home with a camo pair and i was like i'll shut up <laughs> right <laughs> they, they got my money you know they got my money <laughs> do you think pro arm wrestlers would be good in your sport actually yeah you know, I think as someone was, I think they were taking a jab at me one day when I had sent them a message over Instagram. They were like, yeah, you know, whatever we were talking about. And they were like, yeah, you should try professional arm wrestling next. You know, I didn't know if they were being funny or if right. they legitimately meant it or not. So I just kind of left that there. But I think that um, the stage setup would be similar because they're used to competing up there with a table in between them. You know, they have stances and techniques that they could, you know, use and, and figure out from being up there. And they're just naturally strong because it's all that upper body, upper body and, and torso cranking. You know, um, yeah. I, I definitely th I feel like they would do better than most people who come in from boxing and MMA more so because of the feet, uh, the, the stepping violations that people get because they're so used to pivoting their feet from throwing punches. Right. That when they go to throw a strike, they end up uh, lifting or pivoting and getting um, a DQ if it's a knockout or losing a point throughout their fight. But it's, it's funny you say that about, you know, the, the pivoting and, you know, obviously 
you were talking about the ostrich skin and keeping your feet planted so they don't they don't skid. That's one thing, especially well, obviously within power slap that I, I think that I would change. Um, not the pivoting, because I obviously I understand why you're not really trying to fucking kill anybody out there. Um, but in terms of like you take this Sheena her her fight where she, you know, got knocked out and the refs and the and uh the commentators everybody was like it's a knockout it's a knockout nobody stopped to question the dq first and nobody stopped to review the tape everybody went explosive and i watch it from a point of view of okay but these referees you know talking you know especially you know you and every competitor out there your your life is in your hands but your life is you're pretty much passing the torch to them to see these fucking mistakes to keep the eye on it so I, I think if I, as an outsider looking in, I think if I was to change one thing or I could have an influence to change one thing about your sport, it would be the referees would be a little bit more knowledgeable going out there. I, I don't, you know, I don't know what the training is like to be a ref. Maybe I'm, you think I, maybe I'm talking out of school here, just from an outsider looking in, I see some of the fights here that, you know, they'll, they'll call something that I would be like, oh, that's, that's bludgeoning. That's, you know, that's definitely a cheap shot. That's an eye. Oh no. And they going, no, that's a, that's a solid hit. And I just think with the re with the tape, I mean, if it's the NFL, you've got five people all, you know, weighing their opinion with with you guys. It's like they seem to make these calls on a blink of a dime. Um, it's some of them definitely seem that way. And I understand exactly what you're saying. I know for a fact that they're they are going over the instant replays. So if the referees don't get a call up there. You know, okay. it automatically goes back to the commission sitting at the table they replay it and if they see an issue that the referees have not called yet they'll set up a, a light it's flashing they know to pause the fight and then referees will go over find out what the issue is the call you know and and so on and so forth to continue the fight um i think a lot of it like you're saying is everything is so new so like the the training is yeah, we're, we're figuring out what the training it, to even to, to even be is right now because it's True. still such a you know we're going into power slap eight in um june now i believe so you know it's only eight events deep so you got to think by the by the eighth ufc you know they, they might have still been punching each other in the nuts and oh. <laughs> and throwing crazy elbows and stuff like that so you know for as as easy as it is to say these calls should be made or shouldn't be made, it's still a learning process for all parties involved. And I think that's the hard part that everyone has to deal with. You know, people who get the calls, people who get the calls or don't get the calls, you know, it's, it's really hard to go back and be like, Hey, so what do we do now? You know, it's the, again, the, the learning process and the learning curve is tightening up as we speak. You know, I know they're going from the last event, they're going over stuff and trying to tighten up even more. So every single event they're, they're tweaking here, tightening there. We have rules meetings before every event. So that way we are, um, if we have questions for the referees, we can talk to them because they have a list already of who our referees will be. So you will talk to your specific referee, That's cool. not just a referee and hope they get the message passed along. You know, if there is an issue, uh, the matchmaker or uh, the power slap president will come down and, you know, talk to someone in the back. If the referees have a concern that they, you know, notice something in passing or they have a concern with the conversation. So it's um, a lot more, tight knit than I think people really understand, but also we just unfortunately have to give the leeway at this time for the, the learning curve of all of it in general, you know, and the growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. That's good. You know, cause uh, you know, the, the viewer at home, you know, sometimes you're going and obviously we have a better view than just about anybody because we're looking at it, you know, we're looking at the feet, we're looking at the pivot. We're, you know, we have all these different angles, um, you know, sometimes you just feel, and I shouldn't say, classify it or generalize as every referee. It just seems like when you go in there, some guys are like looking and they're really looking for the answer from someone else. And it's like, that's, that's not what you want to see. You know what I mean? But then again, you do have some guys in there that I, I'll see, you know, they'll replay the tape, da, 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 da. They'll go, they'll talk and they'll make sure it's all correct. You know, they really give the tug on the arm, the walk towards me. And then I'll see some guys that kind of, okay, I'm, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm ref. But like you said, you know, 
um, number eight's coming up. So there's only been a couple of them. You know what I mean? It's still learning as you go. So I do get that. But it's uh, just general thoughts that go across your head. Like, come on, guy. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? right. Well, and since I coached the last event, even then the referee, you know, because as a coach, I'm yelling to yell no matter what to if, right. if to any any help I can get the guys I'm coaching or women, whoever, um, whoever's on the card, if I can get them to re look at something and then be able to get the call, by all means, I'm going to be yelling and complaining about it. So, um, but as from the coaching aspect, uh, that's what I was getting at was even if I'm yelling about something up there, the referees will pop over real quick or the commission will come over and let you know in between like, Hey, that was good. This wasn't good. You noticed this, you didn't yada, yada. They'll, they'll kind of communicate with you, uh, as the coach as well. So while you're going up there with the fighter, you can communicate to him that like, Hey, they went over this and this is all being taken care of the way it's supposed to. That's good. That's uh, that's good to know that at least it, you know, from the, you know, obviously from the inside perspective that you're being taken care of and that there are more eyes on it than what it seems sometimes, which is really good. Yeah. Does the beard help? I, you know, I, every, every person no. I talk to, they go, ask him if the beard helps. And I go, <laughs> okay. And the only thing I can think of is it doesn't get that, you, you know, like when you're doing brick work and you hear that, that fucking uh -huh. that clack, you don't hear that slap, you know, but I imagine obviously you still get it. I mean, it's no fucking padding, you know, when it breaks down to it. Yeah. You know, I would say it, it might take a, a small percentage of the sting off. But also, we're all throwing so hard that the beard's not going to help. You know, I, right. I don't, I know people, I don't, I don't know if it's just a reason to get us all to shave. Right. Or, or what it may be, because Wolverine's had to deal with this for so long now and is such right. a front runner and getting his beard dogged on because he should shave it. But he's actually cut it in the past in his prior fights. He has cut it before just to show that it doesn't matter, you know, like right. like you said, other than that sound and a little bit of sting on your actual skin. But we're hitting right. so damn hard, man. You're going to oh, end yeah. up with a hematoma cheek anyhow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I see it cut, it's, I can imagine I should expand and just, you know, quick. Do you. Uh, in in your you know day to day or I don't know, you know, I don't know uh, how you would put it even recreationally. Do you are you a partaker of any kind of. THC, any edibles, do anything, any, uh, you know, like what's your vice, you know? Yeah. You, you uh, well, work. my vice could be anything, you know, I could have anything as a vice. It, it needs to be working out. Cause I can easily, I, you know, I, I don't mind getting into it, but I'll overdo it or, you know, mar moderately, uh, take, take too much time off, but it's one of those things where my vice needs to be working out and that's what I try and like it to be. Um, no, I'm not opposed to the THC and, and CBD stuff. I like the CBD roll-ons for your joints. I mean, they have THC in them, so it doesn't matter anyhow. But right. if it if it helps you feel better and can help your body feel better, I'm I'm all for it. You know, people doing uh, all the research that's come out with again, this is in appropriation and not for kids, because I know one of my kids will end up watching this and use it against me in the future. I'm talking oh, responsible adults. Absolutely and, responsibly. And, Yes, in appropriate amounts, you know, I know like the they've heard a lot of research that they talk about for the micro dosing for people, um, yeah. especially veterans with PTSD or people who've been through traumatic instances, um, people who have, you know, whatever, whatever the, the seizure stuff is, the THC can help. Um, I feel like people definitely need to realize it's more of a medical thing and you know, you can abuse anything. You can get addicted to chewing gum. You can get addicted Absolutely. to eating foam out of your mattress. We all seen it on the TV shows. So, <laughs> you know, you just pick, like you said, pick your vice. Uh, but I'm, I'm all for all of that as long as people do it responsibly. Do you ever? Uh, is it ever helping your recovery? You ever embark in your recovery with it? Maybe like uh, just for for pain. I know you talk about for the roll ons, but uh, ever any CBD chews or anything like that? Just to you know after you know after the matches kind of get your body cool down oh i actually i actually received some uh a droplet thing or you know a container of them that i have that every so often if i feel like you know if i feel like my joints are real sore i'll throw it in my water before i go to bed so that way it, it can you know play a factor overnight um 
I guess I'm trying to think what other, I've had a few other, uh, just the gummies that they have for CBD for the same type of thing, you know, again, take it before I go to bed, help, help sleep on top of, you know, help my joints recover and with the inflammation. Cause you know, I've, I've never been kind to my body even before power slap. So, right. you know, I've always, I've always had aches and pains here and there between blue collar life, farm life, doing, you know, martial art stuff. Uh, being a dad, because my kids will jump me all together, even the <laughs> even the little ones. So I got to be prepared for for anything. I can imagine. I I have uh, had a lot of friends that grew up on farms, living where I lived, and you know that is that is not easy work, man. A lot of people don't, you know, I uh, a lot of people look at it and they either go like, okay, it's a farm, or they go, yeah, that's that's fuck, that's a lot of fucking work, man, because they know what goes into it, man. I mean, you're waking up before the roosters do every day. You're you know you're doing hay you're barreling you're fucking tilling you're i mean that's a lot of work exactly i was just i was just about to say when when i was a kid i remember getting in a you know an argument with my sister i said you don't have to get up in the middle of the night and stack hay with dad and she goes neither do you i said bull crap i don't i (laughs) said you you don't know because you were sleeping so you know there was probably many a nights in the summer where you know more power to my dad he would work a long hard day as an excavator and still they would be cool enough to have a dump bed and a, a extra large trailer full of hay to bring home in the middle of the night so that way he could sleep for three hours and probably go right back to work so by all means you know i i'll take that he had to have me come get up at night with him and go out there and and stack it but you know it was definitely things like that that shape you through life that when you talk to someone who's never, you know, they've never even thrown a bale of hay, let alone got up in the middle of the night, dragged themselves out of their bed to wipe the sleep out of their eyes and, and you know, go help their dad because he needed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a different kind of sweating, man. That's uh, And then it sucks with the hay, too, because then, you know, I, I remember myself helping out just you know being hanging out with my friends for the day oh hey take this barrel do that and then you know you don't realize you have it on you and you go to wipe your head and now you're fucking itching everywhere because you're you know you're oh, yeah. you're inexperienced and then you're just like fucking breaking out in hives man <laughs> you know what i mean it's just crazy. oh yeah because right if and if it wasn't the hay we had a giant pile of ostrich leaves that was sitting right there that you know lord only knows what was living and crawling around in that that i was just trudging on through so right my wife and I, we go to a, uh, go to this 40 acre farm. Awesome. It's an alpaca farm. And, uh, <laughs> we, we go there, man. I'll tell you what, those alpacas are cool, man. They, uh, he, apparently the guy we go there and the, the guy who owns the farm, he's like an award winning alpaca judge. And these alpacas that are just walking around are like award winning, like some of the best on like, you know, quote unquote, like the planet, like people pay to see these things and i'm like oh that's cool <laughs> you know what yeah I mean? right when they Not start too familiar <laughs> when they start telling you that you could sell one of those and probably buy two or three homes really go holy cow you know it's a it's a whole nother world when you get into deep farming you know the amount you can sell a, a good bull for a good horse a, you know a good prize winning anything if it's got that prize winning bloodline then the oh, yeah. the benjamins come with it absolutely yeah, well, yeah, well, we're at the, um, you know, he's got his, it's like a little studio that sits there on the other side of the property, and you walk in, and it's got uh, all kinds, Rusty Shackelford is the the name of the one, and then Sprocket, and I'm like, what, and there's all these pictures of him, and these huge trophies, and, you know, he's standing there with the alpaca, and I'm like, that's so crazy, man, but uh, I'd believe it, because th- this guy is, uh, you could tell that he has some exquisite taste out there, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And everything's just beautiful. It's like it's such a nice farm. It's it's something picturesque. It's actually where we got married. We liked it so much. Uh, I asked him. We went there a couple of times, and I was like, "You mind have this nice little uh, pond over there and have these ducks going and stuff like that?" And I was like, "You mind if me, my wife and I get married here in a couple months?" And he was like, "Are you for real?" <laughs> I said, "Perfect yeah, scenery, man. man. Perfect yeah, scenery. It was, it, it was it was beautiful. It was great. It uh." Almost didn't happen because the official didn't show up, called me 10 minutes before she was supposed to be there and was like, oh, I can't do it. Can you get, can you get married tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, are no. you serious? Oh, my God. Yeah. And we only had one couple, one friend and his wife that were there. And uh, I said, hey, I found this lady. I called her and 
man, God bless her heart, dude. I, I called her on Facebook. You know, you never answer a call from somebody you don't know, let alone on Facebook. And I was like, hey, I had made a post, uh, you know, a couple months ago about I was getting married and da 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 da. You had asked me, but we already had an official. She backed out. Can are you still available? And a woman was like, sweetie, I'm three hours away in Boston. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not getting married today. And uh, she goes, if you have somebody that'll read your vows, I'll meet you in three hours and sign a paper for you. Say I did it. And I was like, what? So my buddy, Boom. we call him Captain Clutch now, man. <laughs> he, he, came, he came in, he came in clutch. I was like, here, read this woman's vows and uh, we're going to sign the paperwork later. And the woman's going to say she did it. And he was like, I got you, man. But it was cool. Nice. Uh, you know, when you look at the pictures, it's just a picturesque day on the farm, you know? Right. No one would know that the mayhem going on behind the scenes. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, man. You uh <laughs> you know, I've heard you talk about I've heard you talk about your family and I've heard I've heard, I've heard people ask you before before you won the belt. What were you going to do when you won the belt? And you had said uh you go out to dinner with the family, you know, probably go grab a soda and an ice cream, right? And I, I was thinking, I was doing some research and uh I'm like a weird soda guy myself. I just, you know, if I see a weird soda, I have to have it. And just out of curiosity, um, did, did did you did you go to Cast Iron? Is that where you were at? No, we did not go there. But for the baby shower for my youngest, who's now six months, they do. Um, they bring a keg. Okay. They'll they'll have a keg of root beer or you know whatever. Usually root beer, but they can also bring the other uh, the other flavors because we've stopped in there a few times, but. Uh, yes, that place. I, you know, we didn't go there directly, but we had them bring the the kegerator of root beer here, so that way we could have it on tap for the baby shower. Oh, that's cool, man. That is so cool. What's your uh? You have a favorite flavor? Is root beer your favorite? Um, I'm open. I'm open to try all of them. You know, I always like a good orange cream soda, but that would. You know, since my regular drinking yes. days are over, I would not mind going down there one day and having like uh, a, a test where you have just shot glasses of all of them. So that way you could do a little taste testing. That Absolutely. would be that sounds like fun. <laughs> That's, yeah, see, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I am. Uh, you said orange cream, love orange cream, a good old fashioned orange cream. You know, where you have that something about that. It's it's not it's almost the the fake orange, but it's just like. It cuts through, and you got a nice cream. The cream has to be an old fashioned cream for me. Uh, I will, I will try any kind of cream. Cream soda, pretty much, is my favorite. I'll, I'll you know, any kind, red, blue, whatever. But uh, yeah, an orange cream, man, orange cream, blue cream, uh, any of those are good. I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah, they've got, says new. <laughs> yeah, they've got a they've got a whole wall of stuff down there that's just you know everything they have is really good and definitely worth the while and you know their customer service was great because they delivered uh, they delivered that here they brought it right over where we needed it plugged it in made sure it was good to go and then you know went about their business for the day so shout out to them being out in Ohio what do you call it soda or pop? Um, I guess it depends on which. Uh, which family member's house I was at, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of both for us, but it was usually a lot, you know, it could have been cola. They could have been, they could have called everything a Pepsi. Everything could have been called a Coke. It just depends on who I was around, but I, I am, I prefer to call them by their names. Like if I want a Mountain Dew, I want a Mountain Dew, but I'll drink Mountain Lightning, Lightning if I have to, I'm not too fancy for that. <laughs> That's Mountain Lightning uh dude, what is the dr thunder dr Listen, thunder yep dr thunder reigns supreme in this house <laughs> dr thunder and uh the the i, I think they, what do they call it good choice the cream so the diet cream soda that yep, walmart has. i know what you're talking about it's crazy because they've had a shortage of that the diet hasn't been around here <laughs> not in a couple months my wife and i are hunting it down there is a uh bolo on that <laughs> sounds like a government conspiracy they're coming after you bro what did you what did you unveil before we got here huh <laughs> and what what haven't i unveiled <laughs> oh man i just happen to be that guy right place right time sometimes you know i know the feeling a sour guy Sa sour or heat you like anything like that 
Any uh, I like both. Honestly, it took yeah. me till I was 18 to even be able to eat like Taco Bell mild sauce. But wow. since then, I've definitely become a big fan of hot food. Gotcha. And then, you know, sour, I've always liked. I used to eat lemons for fun. Are you a Fight Club fan? Oh, of course, bro. I grew up watching that. I mean, all the time, you know, my life was kind of like a time capsule because during the 90s, my life was like the 80s. During oh, okay. the 2000s, my life was like the 90s. Like I didn't have cable TV until I was 13. I had the end. I had the antenna up until I was, you know, 12 and a half, 13 years old. Oh, so, shit. you know, any anything that people are like, oh, yeah, like I was still watching VHS tapes when people had Internet in their house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same way. I had that VHS player, man. Hundreds, hundreds of tapes, dude. It was always a toss up between Back to the Future 2 or Fight Club. <laughs> yep. I was going to say Fight Club, Girl Interrupted. I'm trying to think what a butterfly effect. Oh, um, House on Haunted Hill. Oh, you know, all sorts of goodies that I shouldn't have been watching when I was a kid. But my cousin and my sister were like, it'll be all right. <laughs> That's, yeah, I remember, uh, I remember when I was real young. People watching Chucky like, when it first come out, and I was like, "Ah, oh, so scared of him." But then I was like, "Or him and Freddy." But then it was weird. I I would trick myself. I'd be like, when I go to when I go to sleep and it's dark, I'd be like, "They can't kill me if I think they're my friend." So I'd be like, "Okay," <laughs> yeah. you know? and then they're cool. And then I wouldn't dream about him because he's my friend, so he couldn't kill me in my sleep. <laughs> right? Whatever, Ooh, whatever shit. you can tell yourself to be able to go to bed. Yeah, you know, being young and watching that shit, you're like, ah, oh. don't you don't really think about it, but you know, nowadays, what uh, what kind of entertainment are you into? Like, like if you were, if I was to flip through your DVR or your uh, you know, last couple programs, what are you watching over there? Um, Gold Rush. I'm all about them guys hunting for gold. The UFC fights, whenever they're on. Okay. Um trying to think what else there's not uh naked and afraid been on a naked and afraid kick just because it's hilarious to watch and of course like everybody else i sit at the hair and i go i could do that <laughs> but that's that's what everyone says about what i do for a living so you know to each his own we're, we're all riding the couch real hard from that standpoint <laughs> right right Every everything we like we go ah oh, it's it's i could do that you know that's no <laughs> and then i just finished uh i just finished twisted steel the other night Cause I've okay. been able to watch it on the weekends whenever I take the baby and then just started the lot of milk on Netflix, but any, any more, you know, it's hard for me to really have time to watch TV cause the kids usually have something or my wife will have on uh, live PD. We're always watching live PD. I get gotcha. sucked into that. Cause then we're all like, what's <laughs> going on? Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's the shit. I love it. And plus and not only that, but, you can never tell if it's a re I mean, well, for the most part, you can't really tell if it's a repeat. You know what I mean? Under the live PD, you know, you're you're in it, you know, but e even on shows like that, even when they do kind of, you know, they have a down day and they throw something else on, you're like, I don't care. It's so good. You just have to watch it. Just something about watching people fuck up and then get that karma real quick. And you just go, ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like you, last night, perfect me? example. There was some, some insane guy who covered in Nazi tattoos that was trying to run people over getting in their car and he was butt naked in the car and uh, tried to run over a guy and got shot up in his car. Oh, so that's, God. I walked out of the bedroom that I was working on last night to put the floor in and my wife's she had to rewind it and was like, watch this guys <laughs> running people over getting shot up falling out his truck naked i'm like oh my god you know it's naked and afraid on meets live pd uh, meets jail meets 60 days in all at once man it was oh, insane man. that's fucked up man and then you know and then it's weird because if you ever see the person just casually you go isn't that the guy is it, imagine being known for that i mean oh man dude that's kind of suck not 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 people's best moments, but it's weird because it makes you think like they signed a release, I guess, right? To be on, so it's like no, that was my no, they no, don't, so be, on that they don't have to. Not anymore because oh, technically wow. that's why you'll hear them say they're filming a documentary because in a documentary the only thing you have to do is blur their face. Oh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, don't hold gotcha. me to that. But gotcha. that's why you'll hear them all the time now. That's why it went away for a while and then they came back with the this is a documentary. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see that. There's documentaries are huge right now, man. Loophole. It's a loophole. <laughs> Just the rest of the government loophole. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yes. Yes. It's anything. 
people love gray areas and they love walking in them. <laughs> you yep. know what I mean? It's like, have you, uh, it's like a person I had heard about, I guess Pepsi dropped the trademark of Sierra Mist as somebody, some like influencer, because now they call it St Starry or something. Yep. And uh, some influencer bought Sierra Mist, the trademark, and then Pepsi tried to sue him and lost. So now Pepsi apparently is trying to buy it back from ah. this, this woman. And she's like, no, man, <laughs> that's mine. But right. I guess her her online name is Sierra Mist, but it's like, hey, man, you know, that's you got to respect the business of that. <laughs> You know, it's crazy because that's, right. that's the gray area, but it's a little shady. But at the same time, it's like, uh, if you're a billion dollar corporation and you're going to slip, man, hey, I, yeah, sucks. that's on them. <laughs> Don't know? make that mistake. Absolutely. Let me see. Oh, man. You know, I have to. T this is going to sound so stupid. And I, I understand ahead of time how stupid this sounds. But um, obviously the name John Davis, right? I, I, ever since I was like 13, I have a very good friend named John Davis <laughs> and I, he's one of the few people I always tell who's going to be on and who I'm going to talk to. And I, I, I sent this like little message out and I said, Hey man, I'm going to have uh John and machine Davis on the show. And he goes, when are we, when are we doing this? I don't understand. And I was like, no, man, <laughs> not you. And he was like, Oh, Oh, tell him I said, hi, I guess from one John Davis to another. <laughs> Right, shout I just out thought it was him. the funniest thing. Yeah, man, you know, do you, you think on the list of John Davis is out there? <laughs> Thank you, Reign Supreme. Because, I mean, I'm not saying he has a problem, but do you rank over? Are you the top Supreme John Davis in America? <laughs> I mean, I would say so. You know, my dad's name is John Davis, Holy so I'm shit. just gonna say that I'm I'm ranked over top of him, and then. Yeah, I mean, any any of the other ones I run into, I guess we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. You know, I'm not I'm not going to talk over the Internet, but I'm saying if it if it has to be on site, we can pull out IDs, uh, exchange that we're both John Davis and we can go from there. There it is. There it is. John Davis is of of the world. Be on the lookout. Right. Be I don't care what continent. I don't care what, <laughs> what ocean you're in. Pick a spot, any spot. <laughs> going into going into your sport for those who don't know you know how did how, how did this how how was it presented to you um you know some people uh at the at the very beginning with the, is what we all refer to as the exhibition there was you know um quite a handful of people that were brought out and we were all kind of you know it was real hush hush some knew what was going on, that it was supposed to be for Dana possibly and connected to, you know, the UFC ties and all of that stuff. Some of us were really, uh, you know, very, very unknowing to what was you know, the, the big picture. But uh, again, some people got asked. I myself, I stumbled across an ad. You know, I was in the process of training uh, and looking to get into amateur MMA just so that way. I, you know, that was that was my original thoughts and you know stance that i was going for to have you know some sort of martial arts career and like you were saying you know hopefully be able to fight in some of these bigger leagues one day but uh in all of the the facebook groups where you look out for you know amateur and local fights and the regional scene um and one day all like three or four of them the same ad popped up about getting paid for slap fighting and at first i just kind of was like whatever dude you know uh, a couple days went by it was still there i ended up posting a comment or you know something along those lines asking if it was even real and then the next thing you know through you know conversation and a lot of paperwork um i'm down in vegas at a hotel with people who you know have way higher higher profiles in in the fight world than i do because i'm just joe blow coming off the then i was pretty much coming off the couch don't get me wrong i was training but i had no you know i had no background in anything compared to a lot of people who had at least had fights in one sport or another you know a, again a higher profile than what mine was to be brought out there to you know entertain the masses so, you know, once we got down there and did the qualifier, it's all just been a, a roller coaster ever since. The shirts that you guys wear, obviously you have a monster logo, things like that. Mm -hmm. How does sponsorship go? 
Um, as for their sponsors, if they have up on that stuff, um, it's kind of like we all get some of us, we all get built bars sent to us. And then as for the actual sponsors up there, it's on, it's at their discretion to reach out to us for individual sponsorship because they are sponsorships of power slap itself, but we are allowed to have sponsors, but I don't think anyone's going to be getting their, their local sponsor, uh, on the back of their shirt anytime soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Understandable. I was just wondering, I was just like, I wonder how that goes. Cause you, you know, I, 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 I always see the, obviously the power slap. I see the monster and then I see the podiums with like the, what do they call it? The, the, the good dad beer or the happy, happy dad. dad, happy dad beer, uh, you know, and things like that. And then I see like the times 10 and everything and the platinum. And I was always like, I wonder, I wonder if they have, you know, opportunities or if they kind of pigeonhole it to where they say, Hey, in-house only type deal. But that's, that's cool. That's cool. You have the option for that. How long till you guys get your own action figures? I don't know about that one, but I would love that any day. You know, I, it's cool enough. The experiences of being able to sign stuff for folks and people want to take pictures for you. Kids look up to you, you know, messages you get that people reach out. They're just being nice and, you know, following me and what, what I've got going on. So uh, to have some kid walk up to me one day with an action figure or, you know, have my kids have a, a wall with my action figure on it, that would be, I mean, come on. You can't say that wouldn't be one of the darkest That's, things ever. No matter absolutely. who you are. That would absolutely. Be what's, what is, uh, what's the machines? Uh, what do they call them? Like the accessories. What are you coming with? What's your package coming with? Oh man, uh, a hand of steel, um, a replaceable shoulder. Cause if you've seen in, uh, my second fight, I had a shoulder yep. injury, so yep. they could make a, a nifty little steel shoulder or something like that. That's, uh, taken care of, um, you know, and I'd say, uh, a laser focus eye. So that way that accuracy is on point. That would definitely oh, yeah. be the, the attributes of my, uh, machine, John, the machine Davis toy. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And I heard you talking about the left arm earlier about working with it. So don't think it skipped by me. I heard you talking about the left arm earlier. I was going to get to oh. that, but I, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, uh, I mean, but you know, for the most part, it's, it's always right on three. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I, I only say this cause, cause you brought it up talk about, you know, the, the second fight with Wesley Dream where you, you popped out, uh, do you feel that was your hardest competitor so far? Um, I wouldn't say it was the hardest competitor, and that's right. no dig at him because right. he does have uh, quite a bit of power. He hits really hard. I'll give him all the credit where it's due. I think that was my hardest match to make it through because of all of the obstacles that were there. You know, there was – uh, there was a lot more in that one between penalties that we both were, uh, that we both had received, uh, me having an injury and, you know, my left going with my left and not being comfortable because, uh, you know, the, between the level of pain and distraction that I'm feeling from my other arm and then the worry of losing. Cause you know, I've said it before at the very beginning, man, I didn't think I was going to be able to finish the fight, let alone go through it. But, you know, being able to convince the refs, convince the doctors, convince myself and, you know, all of the brass of power slap that I can keep going and, you know, Absolutely. at least wanted to finish the fight, not, you know, not just quit because I had a, a simple little injury, but, uh, you know, it was, it was the most difficult to deal with before and after I would say, because uh, the buildup between Wesley and I were guys who had been at the exhibition uh, we came in the house and we were both ranked in the, in the top. So we had pretty much assumed and talked about even being on the same team that we were going to probably end up fighting for the title. Um, you know, fast forward, it doesn't happen until power slap two, which we think finally, Hey, you know, we get to go up here and put on this show. You know, we wanted it to be extravagant. You know, one of us wanted to knock the other one out You know, all that friendship shit gets left at, at the side. Once you walk up to the, onto that podium and up to that table to compete. But, um, you know, the, the injury and again, the amount of obstacles we both had to overcome to be able to finish that fight was just astronomical. I would say, you know, I, I really wouldn't want to wish that on anyone to have to go up there and deal with that because 
I, you know, I was, I was lost in a, in the uh, abyss of what was the, the apex at that point in time, just trying to survive and, you know, hopefully be able to make it to the end of the fight. Absolutely. That's a, I mean, it, that right there, that says, speaks a lot. It speaks volumes to your, your mental strength. I mean, you know, a lot of people would go, uh, you know, let me call out. I'm sure they would try to, but they would probably fail, especially given the circumstances, given what it is, given, given the injury, given, you know, you didn't, obviously you didn't walk in there expecting to go left. You know what I mean? So, you know, that, that speaks volumes to the, uh, the strength that you actually have and the focus that you re retain in those situations, man. I think, uh, from an outsider's perspective, looking in, that's, that's one of the things I think that really makes you a good champ is you, you stay level-headed, but I do know that once, once they, once they call the name and raise your arm, it's let's fucking go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but there's, you know, obviously time and place for everything, you know, I mean, you, you celebrate your victories and you take, always take something away from your failures. You know what I mean? That, you know, um, obviously in power slap, you don't know what I'm even talking about, but in life, you know, we always take something away, you know, from our struggles and failures, you know? Absolutely. You know, and I, I have had losses, uh, you know, I have one loss you know, at the very beginning that the, the fight never gets shown, but that's why I have a one in that loss column. It was at heavyweight when we first started this in the exhibition. So I'm at least undefeated at middleweight and hopefully can, you know, continue that reign until my time, you know, comes to an end or I finally move on. All right. You think about moving on to a different division? You think about balking up a little bit or are you, are you, uh, um, you know? I don't know right now it's, it's kind of up in the air. I would, I, I, I just need time to know whether they want me to go down or to go up if they were want me to, you know, move divisions or, or do something else. Um, it's more so I'm just really waiting on a fight at 185 at, at middleweight. It's the hardest part. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's like playing it's, a waiting such, game, dude. Yes. Yes. And that's why, you know, I'm so grateful to be able to have gone and coached to power slap seven, the yeah. same as power slap three that kept yeah. me relevant that, you know, they, they gave me an opportunity to be around, you know, what networking I can do with the folks that come out to the shows. So that's always, always a bonus because I don't have to necessarily be in fight mode the entire time i can kind of try and you know do some stuff either on my own or while i'm at the apex coaching but i just want to fight you know watching everybody go up there and compete and having to sit uh on the sideline man it sucks yeah that's um uh, understandable because you know you could be the champ for five years but if you only you know go against you know go against an opponent five times they're going to say they're not going to go the five years they're going to go oh he only he only you know defended the five times um, yeah so i i definitely understand from there man it's it, it's crazy i've been watching been waiting i obviously I, I don't know um i've actually been busy for a couple of days obviously it's like are my awesome life haven't heard anything i don't think there's anything out there about eight yet but are, are you tracking on anything um nothing to my knowledge you know and even if i even if i had something i could put a, a an inkling towards that i might have knowledge on i don't you know right now is is up in the air I'm I'm just waiting on a phone call, man. If they called me right now, I'd have to be like, "Hey, bro, pause this. I'll yeah, hop right yeah. back on." Because they're calling, and fingers crossed that it's it's game time, and just you know figure out what it what and who. Because I already know where I'm gonna be, and you know, gonna be nighttime, gonna be knockout for, for someone. Because I'm I'm chasing that next time. Okay. You know, I I don't plan on going for a five rounder again. That's um. You know, knocking somebody out up there at that podium, I you know that's got to be the best high on the planet, right? Uh it's 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 weird because the you know my knock when I when I won the belt and I had that crazy KO that's pretty much the viral clip. Yeah, I didn't even know that it had happened until you know a couple seconds afterwards, and I I once I saw the replay, I was like, holy shit, man! Um, because uh, of the follow through and how I end. I'm looking right. at the ground and not so much my opponent. So by the time I turned back around and saw that, I was like, wow, you know, and then the, I think it was that on top of the high of knowing for a fact that once they stopped it, that I had, I, mean, I had already won. I don't have to wait on the judge's decision. I don't have to go stand with the ref and, and wait a minute and a half for them to get through done tallying it up, bro. I won. End of story. Boom. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's Man, that's gotta be crazy. 
And, you know, not only that, but in something like that to be the champ, especially in something new, especially something that's going to take off. We all know it's going to take off. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's taking off. I shouldn't say it like that. Every pay-per-view, every live event on Rumble, everything has more views than the last. You know what I mean? And the viral clips that are already there continue to get more views with everything that everybody's doing now. It's the perpetual engine that's going to keep going until it's on you know, unfathomable fucking, you know, like UFC type proportions, you know what I mean? Because it has nowhere to go but up, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I know you know what I mean. <laughs> if uh, if they were to start, it's something stupid, man. If they were to start bringing in storylines, would you go along with a storyline? Just if they're like, listen, we think this is going to end up getting us to the next level and we're going to take away from uh, other things and we're going to build storylines up. Was that something you'd be in or would you be like, nope? I just I just want to fucking rock, dude. Um, I I don't think a, a pre-made storyline would so much fit for me. You know, they they find the storylines, um, through all of the the video footage that they have. Because I mean, whatever video they have of us, that's what they take and that's what they use. They can make, right. you know, they can make you look one way. You can look another way. It just depends on you know, what, what they put out there and, and kind of make your story. Cause we each kind of have a little bit of a storyline that runs, you know, from when we first started to where we're at now, whether it's, you know, you know, the craziest or, you know, I just go up there and I don't, you know, I don't say anything when I'm comp competing. Usually, you know, it's quiet, but it's action. Um, some guys that are just wiling out and outrageous all the time from their interviews to the weigh-ins. Uh, but for me personally, I don't think a, a pre-made one would do very well. Um, if someone wants to start talking smack and stuff, that's, that's right. fine. It's, it's part of the game, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll all kind of have fun with it, but also for me personally, you start crossing certain lines or, you know, Absolutely. when we're, when we are face to face, if you decide to say things in a certain manner and a certain tone, we might have to address that on the spot. You know, I'm not, Absolutely. I'm not afraid of that at all either, but I also have to make sure I'm not getting in trouble for, Hey, why'd you, why'd you and so-and-so almost get into it in the lobby? Cause we'll right. definitely get in trouble for that. Too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've seen, uh, you know, scrolling through, I see everybody, you know, having fun online. And I know that online is a, a place to, you know, you're not in the moment, you're not doing that. But I also do see a couple times where a couple people will say something that it's like, man, I'll, you know, that's just, I don't know if it's distasteful or if it's trying to get the build up or go for that, uh, the response they're actually looking for. You know what I mean? How, yeah. You know, I, because it's got to be weird to go in here, with, especially being in the house with people and going through and being there from the beginning. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you've built bonds with these people, but when, you know, it's it's time to boot up. I'm sure that shit goes out the window, man. You you know, obviously it's bittersweet. You don't want to really hurt the fucking guy, but uh, I'm sure in that moment you don't really care either. You you have a job to do. You want to retain the belt, and I I mean I I again I could be speaking out of school. This is just where my brain goes. Uh, being the champ, especially for your your division, being a champ, you're taking home the biggest payday. I I would assume. Yeah, especially with you know so. You know what I mean? So you're not giving up that payday. You're not giving up that. And not only that, but I mean, it's, you're a fucking champ, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so that, you know, that voice in the back of your head, who is this in that, in that moment? Who is this guy to fucking try to try to strip me of mine? Like, I don't think so, dude. Abs you know. Absolutely. You know, you say that right now and it sends chills up my arm because it's one of those, you know, that's, those are the, you asked earlier, you know, before I walk up there, that's the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about. I would say, you know, the, okay. the tunnel vision is there. But at the end of that tunnel, the the thing that's slowly dragging itself out of the cage and breaking, you know, breaking off the chains to be able to unleash itself, that monster that lies in there, you know, that's oh, yeah. that's the things that it's saying as, you know, I'm going to walk out there and, and get ready to do what it is I do. Yeah. You think uh you think your time in the Marines, you, you think that it gives you an upper hand, so to speak, on on everybody else because you've you've been through the proverbial ringer you know what i mean like you've been through the camp you've been through some grueling shit out there so it's more like uh you know these guys are just in there lifting weights whereas you've had that that mental 
I don't want to say fuck, you know, it, it feels disrespectful, but you know, you've had that mental fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they break you, you know, and I would say even more so, you know, childhood again, my dad was in the Marine Corps. So there's a, a lot of things that from my childhood that by the time I got to boot camp, because unfortunately I had a very short stint in the Marine Corps, but I was down on Paris Island. You know, I got at least through the, the first phase of training where they, you know, they break you down. You're everyone's on the ground crying, doing push ups and snots running out of their faces. You're watching grown men piss themselves. You know, it's it's like you said, the mental fuck is, is real, but you know, even, even before the, the actual Marine Corps itself, the, the lifestyle that I lived in, you know, was, was in when I was a kid, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of things that you could associate from the Marine Corps over to childhood. You see that you see a, a, a lot of strictness, you know, especially, I mean, you, you get that farm life is strict already dude i mean you're already you know you have to have your proverb you know you have to have your ducks in a row you have to have a strict scheduling so i can imagine you put that on top of each other it's compound interest <laughs> my dad was I mean? in the marine corps and my mom wanted to be a nun so if that doesn't if that doesn't spell out you know strict disaster waiting to happen and why i'm probably such a wild child you know i, I don't know what does <laughs> my uh my wife's mother wanted to be a nun she did a time uh i don't i don't really quite know the name of what you would call it but she did a little time you know what i mean as a nun and then she mm -hmm. i guess she, she you know she left the uh congregation the nunhood you know? the, yeah, nunhood. the nunhood yeah, yeah <laughs> she, she left it i don't know but yeah she uh yeah it's it's definitely you know you have to have a lot of uh self-discipline for that you know especially going in i mean which you know every see it's crazy because everything you do like leads one into the next just like with martial arts you have to have the discipline you know i have it down here uh muay thai and brazilian jiu-jitsu that is that correct yeah yeah That's a, uh, next level in alliance ohio where i train you know shout out to the gym i haven't been able to be in there recently because i've been working on the house but as soon as i get this done you know hopefully back to the grind in there with them because they they support me and what i do um, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to walk into the gym and they don't care about what the champ status is when it right. is spar night or when we are training, they'll gladly be like, Hey, dumbass, you're doing that wrong. Or, Hey, right. you're dropping this hand. You need to check that, whatever, whatever the scenario yeah. is, you know, it's, uh, a, a humbling experience that I think is, is helpful, especially if I am, you know, high up on my mighty horse one day rolling around, it's easy to have someone, you know, knock you back down to reality and, and give you a good humbling when necessary. But the, the atmosphere, I couldn't ask for a better place. And again, you know, the, the discipline of the martial arts world and, and everything that at least at my gym is, you know, definitely tied in together. You ever do any, uh, what do they call it? Crab McGraw? Crab McGraw? No, no I have not, <laughs> but that looks like, I don't know if I got the hips for that. <laughs> I, uh, man, I see that's, that's, that's like another thing. I see that and I go, I'd like to do that. But then I, I see them on the ground and I'm just like, I, I can't, man. I just, no, <laughs> personally, I can't. I, uh, <laughs> let's say, let's say you have a, let's say you have a weekend to yourself. You can go anywhere you want, do anything you want. Friday to Monday or Friday to Sunday night. What are you doing? Um, now, I can't even say I'd go by myself. If I had a free weekend where things would be taken care of, I'd love to take my wife out somewhere. There you go. There um, you go. You know, even even if it was taking the whole family somewhere for the weekend and being able to take her out while, you know, while we are somewhere, just definitely, right. you know, I, I owe her more than she could even, you know, uh, attempt to say that I owe her. So, um it would definitely be a nice treat that I would love to be able to do for her, not just for myself. That's awesome, man. That's uh, it's very cool. They say behind every successful man is a is a very good woman. You know, I have one of those myself, so I I know uh, know what you're talking about, man. Every ch every chance you get, you go because it's great. I had that written down. You know, it's funny because my wife for business, she went away last month. And uh, I was like, man, yeah, I'm gonna have a day to, a day and a half. I was like, I'm gonna have 38 hours of myself. I sat here with my dogs and I binge Netflix, man. And I was like, uh, what, what did I really think I was going to go do? You know, like, uh, gonna go, get, go get some chicken wings somewhere. Like, you know what I mean? It was weird. Oh yeah. Other, other than work out, if there's a time where she ends up taking all the kids somewhere and I'm sitting here at home, I end up just walking around and I'm just looking at stuff. Cause I don't, 
I don't know what to do. Like you said, in, in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm about to do right. this, this, and this. And then I'm like, I want to, oh, I can't tell anybody that because there's nobody here. I was about to, <laughs> oh, wait, no one's in here to do that with. So, you know, that's, that's kind of where my, you know, my mindset goes. If I, if I had legitimately free time to be able to do stuff, man, it's all about giving, you know, them life experience and, you know, hopefully, hopefully fun memories that they have forever. That's cool, man. Oh yeah. You, uh, you say you're, you're, you're a welder by trade. Yeah, I was, uh, not, not right this second of a machine operator and a core maker, but I could play a bead any day. I still got a welder in here. So, you know, any, anything I can do, you know, blue collar wise, I'm always, I'm always all for it. How's your, uh, How's your boss when you have to travel to go away? How's your company take that? Is it like a, is it like a family company or or is it they just like, hey, man, we, we know what you got to do. Do what you got to do. That's actually why I don't have a regular welding job anymore. Uh, I I walked away from the, you know, it was a great job. Great people to work with for the most part. You know, real laid back work environment. But I had already... I used up all my vacation. I had, I asked for extra uh, time with no pay so I could go do the TV show. And then by the time I, you know, got through my, got to my fights, uh, I wasn't too sure if they were really going to keep me on and be able to, you know, just let me go fight whenever because they were a bigger company, I would say. Okay. Um, so I went back to a different company that I used to work for. That's why I was saying if a, if a welding company wants to hire me so that way I can, you know, make that good welding money on top of go fight. I would love to do that. But uh, being being out at a, a core making company that I've worked at in the past and, you know, they're willing to work with my schedule. They understand that I've got family. So at the drop of a dime, if I got to take off and come home because, you know, water shooting out of something or there's an emergency at home, I can I can run home and take care of that. And you know, if I got to make up hours for if I need it or if they need something done, they're they're willing to work with me. So that's that's why I'm at where I'm at right now. And, that's you know, cool. all all appreciation for that, because it would definitely be even harder in between if I had no job. I definitely wouldn't be able to barely be on my phone talking to you right now. <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, obviously, I, I we have no children, but, you know, I can imagine. Uh, four, you know, four children plus traveling plus you know everything else, just day to day life plus, like you're saying, working on a house. Uh, it's it's a grind, man. It's it's ridiculous. I couldn't even imagine. Couldn't even imagine it, dude. That's good that you have a job like that. That's I, I was I was always one, you know, because some people like with your company now, you know, my smaller operation, but it seems like they look at you as the person you are rather than the number that they're they're trying to make. You know what I mean? Which is cool. Uh, yeah, sometimes yeah, I, find I, that that's I absolutely worth agree. Yes, yes, it's it's helpful for everybody because they've got someone they know coming to work yeah. when I don't have a fight, and then if I do, then you know it's no worry on them when I'm not going to be there. Absolutely. Yeah, your the old the old company the old boss they I mean they they know you could just slap the shit out They're like they, what what is up with these people like I just don't get it was the was the boss ever a dick about it? Were they like, "Hey, it's just, it, it, it's just like they didn't care," or it was just, "Now nah, this is this is the engine that we have here," you know what um, I mean? Was, I work for the engine was, myself. <laughs> it was such a bigger company that for me to even talk to the actual boss, you know, oh, I had no. to get a hold of the HR lady for her to be able to set up a meeting. It was that that kind of scenario where I'm sending emails and making right. phone calls and text messages all day long. Yep. And, you know, once they had said that they weren't too sure on what they'd be able to do in the future about it, it you kind of get the inkling like, hey, you yeah. know, this, I don't know how many more times we can do this. So that's why I just kind of took it as well. You know, if you don't have the inclination that in the future, you're going to be able to work on this with me, then I, I have to figure out something else to do now because power slap covers the bills better as long as I'm actually have a fight. Right. It takes care of the bills better than any regular job that I've ever had. I just actually have to, you know, be able to be allowed to compete. Is uh, is there anyone famous you'd like to slap? Just I mean, just it don't matter who it is, anybody. Um, I don't know, man. Whoever's gonna bring the biggest payday. So that's that's <laughs> that's what it comes down to. If it was, you know, like 
I'd say people probably would like to see me slap Jake Paul. That's some Ohio on Ohio crime. Yeah. Um, I didn't even you think know, about they, that. Yeah. they would love to see him get taken out. And, you know, I'm sure I could catch a bag on the way to do that. Dana would love it all day long if they were able to get that deal signed. <laughs> so that's, that's who I'd go with was little old Jake Paul. While his He's brother's it. in my corner with the prime that is our sponsor. So, boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shit. Cause yeah, cause they, uh, him and him and Dana got a little thing or something, right? A little oh, back and forth exchange. It's, it's the something. internet beef, man. Yeah, it's the it's, internet world. <laughs> you know, it's it's always it's always something, right? It's always something from lights, camera, action. You know. Yep. You never know what to believe. It's you know. So, oh man, you know. Oh, one thing I didn't I didn't ask. Power slap game. I heard you talk about it. I heard you talk about being in it. You know. Mm -hmm. Um that's that, that's up there where you're talking about like an action figure man that's i mean what was that like what's well, you know it was it, um i don't know you don't really get the the full magnitude of it at least i think that's another one of those things that later on down the line i'm going to realize how much more crazy that actually is right because you know my face has been on the cover of it so that was like i think around the time where i was actually i was in the game already and then they had put me as the cover for a while. They were doing like 60,000 downloads a day. So, you know, and, and the stats show that this game is all over the world because it's not it's not as uh, as much as the content where people have to get it um, deciphered, really. You know, you don't get there. You don't have to get it translated. The game is very simple. And it's super addicting the way they have everything set up. So it's, you know, an honor to be able to get in there and be one of the people who've been selected to be on the front of it and and the the loading screen background. I've been able to be on it a few times. It's a, uh, it has made a lot of changes since its initial startup. I've noticed there's, I go through, I played it like probably eight months ago. And I played it a couple months ago and then I got a new phone and then all my downloads went over to my new phone. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll install this again. Yeah, hell yeah. And I was like, wow, it's totally different now. I'm like, it's it's insane. It's it's a it's fucking it's an addicting game. <laughs> oh yeah. They definitely know they they've got the the right people working on the algorithm of things to you know get that dopamine hit from playing the game. Yeah. They've got the smartest folks out there working on that, I'll guarantee it. Oh yeah. Who's your favorite UFC fighter? Um, I wouldn't say I have one favorite, but the ones that I, yeah, my, the ones I like to watch, especially right now, you know, Brendan Allen, he's coming up in the middleweight division. You know, that dude should be hopefully be getting a title shot soon. I've actually had the pleasure to meet him. Um, uh, Matt Fravella, I've actually had the pleasure of meeting him also. He's one of my favorite ones to watch a guy who's a veteran who goes out there every time you know, die by the sword, live by the sword is his kind of mentality. So it's, those, are, those are the kind of fights people want to see, not anything that, you know, is a kind of a pity pack game. So um, who else am I think, you know, Mer that Marab's on a roll. He's coming in. Paulo Costa, shout out to him for, you know, talking about how uh, he likes, you know, thinks that people just want to see the knockouts and that's what we're here for. So, right. you know, more, more power to him. But uh I just I like all UFC in general for the most part of when it comes to the athletes as long as at least it's the one you know the ones who don't have shit to say about us because right. the ones who the ones who have an issue they can you know scatter on down the hallway and keep on talking. <laughs> you know, but it, it makes you it makes you think though, right? Um, what was his name? The general, Elvis's guy from back in the mm -hmm. day. I hate Elvis pins. I mean, he said he sold more of those than he sold of I Love Elvis pins. I look at it as, they're, you know, the old cliche, there's no such thing as bad publicity. If these guys, I mean, they, you know, it sucks because it's like, you know, especially in, in the sport and the context that you're in. But for a, a guy to say something about your sport means he has his eye on it, you know, as far, you know, as far as I would say, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, that the, the few but, times good old Joe Rogan has mentioned it on the podcast, you'll notice he very, he, he very much skims over it as fast as he possibly can when people have brought it up but i know a few folks who've been to the shows have brought it up a few times and he just kind of yeah uh-huh and then tries to go on to the next subject but hey he said it a few times the more like you said no publicity is bad publicity we'll take it absolutely absolutely he uh yeah i mean he 
He would, you know, he, I think he would actually make a great commentator for your sport. You know what I mean? Just in terms of he's, he's, he never is at a loss of things to say or feeling explosive in that moment. You know what I mean? I, I like think he, he would, I think he would understand more after talking to some of us. Yes. Cause it's, it's again, a scenario where nothing has been explained. Nothing has been broke down to, to him. It's the, this is what I compare it to is the, the average UFC fan that's not really into it, but just wants to watch it for the violence. That's the same understanding they have of power slap when it comes to people who don't know anything about what it is we're actually doing. Right. You know, he's got all of the extensive background knowledge for MMA. So there's a reason why he can explain things to people that they'll never be able to get otherwise, but it's the same as how someone like himself who doesn't know what we're doing, doesn't have the, the info on our rule sets and the things that we do. He just needs a, a little bit of time to talk to one of us. And I guarantee, you know, he doesn't he might not be a diehard fan and show up at every event, but I think you could definitely change his mindset on, you know, what it is and why it is. Some of us are doing this. I believe, I believe so as well. His, uh, his influence is, is very long, man. Very deep. It's crazy. He uh, what is he? Fifty million subscribers or something like oh, that. You know what I mean? Who knows? He can he can definitely influence a lot. Let's say you got a call right now, right? Phone rings. Bloop. Hello. Hey, this is Russia. Name your price. We need you on a plane. How much to come over here, and just and just join our league? Oh man, you know How if much? it's if it's unlimited bands. I mean, a couple mil, you know, throw me a couple mil so that way I can, you know, invest when I get home, get the house set up, get years of, uh, you know, of comfort ready on, on the side so that way I can really focus on, you know, not only just the home life and what I could do for my family here, but what I'd be able to do with the time then, you know, the, the martial arts training would be yeah. able to be nonstop. Um, you know, the travel to be able to make connections and networking would be, you know, I first thing I do is buy an RV. So that way we could make trips to go do podcasts yes. that way the family can go do stuff. You know, if I can do all of it at once, man, I know it'd probably be a, a drop in the bucket to the, those folks over there and <laughs> right? a, a good couple mil, man. And I'm, Hell I'm yeah. set. Hell yeah, man. You know, it, it makes me think we were, we were talking earlier about, you know, the viral, viral clip of the guy. Um, you know, everybody calls him like little Rocky. I always see online. They call him little mm -hmm. Rocky. Um, you know, it, when I had first, I don't, couldn't even tell you when, but when I first seen that clip and you know, the, the, the testicular fortitude in me says, yeah, I'd do that. Then realness sets in and goes, nah, I'd be out by slap fucking three at that. My whole face is black, you know? And then, and then <laughs> the, in the back of my head, it goes, well, I wonder how many members of the KGB are saying do not quit right now if you know it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I wonder if that's an added kind of pressure or what kind of influence is over there. You know, I mean, possibly who knows, you know, if they're, if you see them making the side bets. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That'd be crazy. I mean, you know, anything is possible. Right. But, uh, I mean, it makes you defy the odds. Like I was saying earlier, man, it's that mono we mono. I mean, obviously, you know, you are the middleweight champion of the world in power slap, man. Uh, you you have a fresh or excuse me, an in-depth understanding. You have the knowledge that we are you represent yourself as a champion should. Uh, but you also are a grounded person, you know, and it's crazy to have something like that. You know, not only are you. We were talking about tunnel vision earlier. Not only do you have the tunnel vision for your career, but you see the broad spectrum of what it what it's shaping up and where it's going with it. And I think that's a really awesome outlook to have, especially being on the horizon, because I'm sure in your situation, and I understand it might not be day to day, but, you know, people build egos over grains of sand. You know what I mean? Um, so I, you know, that's that's. Again, we were talking about, you know, mental strength earlier, you know, that's got a big part of mental strength, man, to sit there and really have a composure there and go through, like we call it, you know, like I was calling earlier, go to work for the day, you know, and then at the end, then it's, you know, that release that, you know, let's, let's fucking go. Do you, uh, <laughs> when you're, when you're building up for, for a match, 
to defend the title, a lot of boxers and athletes will go like absent for the for the week. Like they're just like, no, don't touch me, don't do this. Are you that same way? Do you have like a weird regimen where you're just like, I get in this groove and then afterwards we're gonna celebrate and go crazy? Or are you just like, ah, you know, it's it's a different kind of training and regimen, or do you treat it as such? Um, it's more so my, you know, Mountain Dew is the first thing I cut out because okay. that's, you know, one of my, that you want to talk about vices, like you said way earlier, Mountain Dew is a guilty pleasure for sure. Okay. So, you know, that's the first thing I cut out. I make sure that, um, I'm not eating all the leftovers that the kids have in the house. So I have to walk, I have to reach for the brownie and then I have to pull my hand back or reach <laughs> for the stuffed crust pizza and pull my hand back. Uh, it's more so just making sure that I'm, I'm on weight, um, and and like you said, the mentally th the mental thing, I'm really pushing myself not to just, uh, you know, physically get stronger and be better, but mentally, you know, I have to push myself in case of the scenario arises, like we were saying earlier, where I have to really dig deep to make it through the fight. You know, that's a big thing. I think people also, you know, might not realize like we're mentally, you're mentally hardening yourself to go up there along with physically, you know, making your body do what it is uh that you ask of it once you get up there gosh makes sense man so things last thing you want to do is run out of stamina man when you're up there i, I can imagine and not even you know not even just you know building up and having all your you know, like your proteins and you know having all your calorie intake but just staying strong and the last thing you want to do is go up there and somebody you know quote unquote you know slap some sense into you where you're just like mm -hmm. hey, what and then because it takes you out of your element you know what i mean or oh. being able to being able to deal with the adrenaline dump, you know, if you can't if you can't deal with that, because I know a lot of guys have said they got up there, they're all hyped up beforehand, and then they walk up the steps and they're like, "Bro, I just got tired," you know, like it's it's that. one of those it's you know the the walkout is more uh, stressful than anything else because you're you know you're you're going to do it, you're about to go up there and you know, either knock somebody out or possibly get knocked out. So that, that stress weighs heavy. And if you're not mentally prepared to push through those, those thoughts and those times before going up there, it can definitely play a factor in, you know, the outcome of your fight and how you, how you compete. Absolutely. I bet. I bet it's, it's, it's an athlete. I mean, you're, you're a fucking athlete. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to stay fucking juiced up, man. Going out to the ring, having your, we talked about the mental health and, and how that, you know, is, does a good day equal that you're ready to bring on the pain or is a, or is a bad day better for the office because you're ready to dish and serve as well. Um, but when you're walking up to the ring and you're getting in there and you have that 30 seconds before, before you take that first hit. And I guess best worst case scenario would be to take the first hit. Where do you go mentally? Uh, you know, tunnel vision sets in real heavy. Um, you know, the, the thought process of being able to unleash, like you said, I wouldn't say it's so much about whether I've had a good day, a bad day, a good week, a bad week, a good month, a bad month. Um, you know, I sit there and, and kind of as the tunnel vision takes over, because I know what my mission is. I know what I need to go do. I know what the job is that I need to go complete. Uh, I'm also thinking of like, Hey, you know, this this person wants what I have. This person wants to take what I'm supposed to earn. This person wants to, you know, by all means, they want the the viral knockout clip. Everyone wants the story to be able to say that they slayed the dragon that is is my career so far. So, you know, and, and I also think about every every rep that I've done here at home. Was it enough? Did I give myself enough of a break in between? Because I don't want to overwork because I've, you know, I can easily do that because I can get so caught up and what is going on but again it's pretty much as the tunnel closes in all of those thoughts begin to quiet and then it's game time you know kill or be killed at that point i don't give a fuck what's going on i have one mission one shot yeah. one kill no luck all skill if i can end it then call it a, call it a good day and let's go home baby let's bust out the bust out the mickey d's and sweet t's <laughs> fuck yeah man hell yeah i fucking love it i love it on your continued path of success that you've you've had, especially in your sport, but um, you know, I, I'm I'm I'm. It may not look like it because I I like some weird shit, right? But I'm <laughs> I, I 
I like to think of myself as uh, I'm like a realist. You know what I'm saying? Like there's people out there, obviously, you know, that can't afford to keep a roof over their head, you know? So to keep a roof over my head is successful to, you know, to be able to afford food for my wife and I want well, successful, you know, I'm sure being a provider for your family, that is success, you know, but in your continued path and in the many different definitions of it, how does John the Machine Davis define success in his life? Um, you know, to to be successful in in all aspects of life is to be able to, you know, ad admit when you've been wrong, and and work on the things that you need to work on, and then take the positives that you've been able to to come away with, and if you can make it better, you know, be better in every aspect, even on your worst day still you know go out there and do something that's going to make you a little bit better as long, you know as even if it's just i don't know the the simplest of things if you go walk for 10 minutes compared to not doing anything at all that day you've bettered yourself you know if if you need to have a conversation with someone to get a you know just just to complain and have an ear to listen to so that way you feel better afterwards it's it's stuff like that that i think people need to focus on more so than you know, just career, career wise, and, you know, more, more of a big picture aspect. Very cool. I like that, man. That's very cool. That's, uh, that's what the people say, man, that's, it's very on brand. You know what I mean? It's awesome. I love it, man. That's, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of small minded people, when you say, how do you define success or what does success look like to you? They go, oh man, you know, fucking $5 million, man. And, and it's really, that's not success. That's just, um, you know, so, if, so you could be, you know, you could hit a luck streak on the stock market. You can do whatever, whatever. I don't know, you know, but you, you know, the successful was to, like you said, wake up, wake up, be better than you were yesterday. You know, go on, go on that walk, do a little, be better, help somebody in need. You know, I like that, man. That's awesome. Very that's cool. what I think the, the world needs it, this, especially in this day and age, you know, and that's why. You know, credit to my wife for hopefully, you know, my kids being the next generation of people that walk this earth that make it a better place. Was your uh, was your wife influential in you making a positive change in your life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I, man, couldn't even begin to think of, you know, where I would be um, without her dealing with my shit. <laughs> How... You know, I I know I should have asked this earlier, but what was her reaction when you were like, "Hey, go into this house," um, you know, I'll be gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, was she like, "What?" Or or did she know that you were intrigued from the first post that you seen about it? Or did you guys have that conversation from the gate? Um, you know, once I once the conversation became more legit between myself and the people who were uh running the exhibition matches, you know, we all sat down and I had a conversation with her and the kids, you know, again, to, to their level of understanding, cause they're all, they're all younger. So it's not like any, it does, none of it makes sense. So trying to make, <laughs> make it make sense, wasn't going to be an easy task, but, uh, especially at the time, uh, you know, my wife completely understood and, and backed me and still backs me. I said it once, I'll say it again, you know, behind every successful man, there's a, a very strong woman, you know, it's a, a damn good one at that, man. And uh, it sounds like we are both, both blessed and fortunate enough to have one, you know? That's absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, my friend, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Uh, I've, I've said it millions of times here. I appreciate the time. I'm going to give you, you know, as long as you want, um, if there's anything you want to plug, promote, any of your sponsorships and anything you have going on, obviously besides power slap, because everybody knows. And if they don't, they are getting familiar. Uh, the, the floor is yours, my friend. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to start off saying again, I know, thank you very much for giving me a, a spot to come on and, and talk, answer questions that I could answer and talk about, you know, my life more so than just what is power slap. So thank you very much for that. And, you know, if anyone's interested in my story, feel free to reach out and connect on uh, on my Instagram at the machine, uh, John the Machine Davis. Uh, that's pretty John Davis on Facebook, and then TikTok's the same way, uh, John the Machine Davis. Um, any of that stuff, you guys look me up on and, and want to connect in the future, that would be great. And you know, appreciate all of you. Thank you. Oh man, I I appreciate the time. 
and uh enjoy the rest of your sunday i don't know if you're gonna work on your house man put your legs up man get some rest in go you know hang out with the kids eat a good dinner <laughs> and uh my friend I, I will be talking to you absolutely man again thank you very much and i hope you enjoy the rest of your sunday not a problem man you as well man thanks so much yep see ya see ya